Sorry. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George, and uh, I am your co-host today for uh, the DSC GitHub workshop. Now, uh, I was going to be hosting with, uh, um, with Martin today, but he has been having some technical difficulties, so I'm going to be taking over his part of the workshop and uh, also to be doing my part. So um, before we get started, let me just uh, talk about what we're going to be doing today. Um, we will be doing a GitHub workshop. Now, GitHub, for those that don't know, is the world's largest uh, VCS provider. VCS standing for version control. And um, what that means is it's basically a system for people to, uh, for, for developers to um, collaborate in creating software projects. So that is when you are in a company, this happens all the time in companies where you have multiple people working on the same project, it gets very difficult to control who does what and making sure that the project still works. And that's done through a system called version control. And there are many different ways of exercising version control. Uh, GitHub is one way of doing it. Well, Git, Git, the framework, which we're going to be working uh, with today is one way of doing it. GitHub is a place that stores repositories. These are all terms and things that we're going to be diving into a bit more um, in, in a moment. But just so you know, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is version control. Right. Um, let's get started. Um, first things first, uh, there is a document here that uh, I'm going to share with you in just a moment. And the document has uh, all the content you need for the, the workshop. It, um, so hold on, let me just get this, get this message sent. Um, um, I actually can't find the chat right now. Hold on, give me a second. All right, there we go. So once that message goes through, all right, there you go. So that should, all right, so you should all uh, get, get that link now. It is basically just a document that details everything that's gonna be happening in the workshop today. And uh, if you get lost at any point, you can just hop onto that document and see what's going on. And um, yeah, um, I'll also be explaining through what's happening. If you have any questions at any point, um, don't unmute yourself. Please just put, put your question in the chat. Uh, and one of our tutors, we have a few tutors that are uh, in this meeting as well, will attend to your question or I will if I see it. All right, so we're also gonna be taking a break uh, at certain points just to make sure that everyone's still on track. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is install Git if you haven't yet. Um, if you're using some Linux distribution, then, that, then Git is actually usually already installed in your system. Um, uh, so I'm not gonna talk about how to get Linux in Windows now, that's a bit of a complicated procedure, but Basically, if you have git installed, you just run git dash dash version in your command line and it should show you the version of git that is installed. Uh, to open the command line on Windows, you type the Windows key and R. And you see a little box pop up in the bottom left corner there. It says CMD, you press enter. And then this thing pops up. This is called the um, terminal or command line. And in here, you, uh, you can check what's going on. You could run commands. So if you run here, git dash dash version, well, there you have it. There, git is installed. If git is not installed, you can go to, what is git's name again? Yeah, there we go, git dash scm.com. And you can install it here. 
yeah, you can find some some documentation here. You can install it for your um, operating system, and you'll see on some Windows, I mean, on some distributions for Windows, it has a thing called Git Bash, which yeah, I have installed here. And what this is is it's a little Linux terminal inside Windows, but just for Git. <laughs> anyway, complicated, but it it does the job. Um, you can run Git Bash version everything in here as well. So um, I'll, I don't know, I'll give you a few seconds to install a version of Git on whatever device you're running on. I hope most of you already have Git. Like I said, Linux already has it installed. Um, installing it on Windows takes just a few milliseconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, while, while, you're installing, while you're installing Git, um, go to a, go, Make yourself a directory somewhere on your computer that you can uh, that you can work in because we're going to be creating some files and um, editing some files and, and committing some files. So um, I'm going to be working just in the terminal, but you don't have to work in the terminal. You can just go to good old file explorer, right click, new folder. That works as well. Um, so wherever you are, yeah, just make yourself a nice directory. Um, I'm going to create myself a directory called projects, cd in there, and then I'm going to create a directory called um, GitHub Workshop. Um, okay. So I'm hoping that at this point, uh, Everyone has Git installed, a version of Git on whatever operating system it is that you're running on, and you have a directory somewhere uh, where you can do this, uh, the content that we'll be doing in this, in this workshop. Okay, now um, I'm gonna get going. So, all right, so once again, to make sure that you have, for the new people that just joined, just make sure you have uh, Git installed. And you can check that Git is installed by opening up your terminal, either in Windows with WinR CMD, or in Linux with Control Alt T. And then just type Git dash dash version, and you should have, uh, it should tell you what version is running. If you don't have Git installed, it'll give you some error, in which case you should install it at git-acm.com. All right, um, okay, let's get down to it. So first things first, uh, we made a directory, we're in there. Okay, so typically what you would do is you would create a project. Um, if you have an IDE, you can just boot it up and I wonder if I should do it now. Um, you know, this, yeah, it doesn't necessarily, you can just create, you can um, start a project however you want. You can literally create a file if you want to, and then you can type some text in there. Um, and there you have it, oops, sorry about that. And there you have it, a file. Um, or you can uh, start your IDE, and then you can create some files, do some running, whatever. Um, but I just want you to, to make some files and this, these files will represent your project. Um, yes, because these are the files that we're going to be uh, committing and altering and, and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be using a simple example, literally just a file called file.txt. Um, and it just contains literally the, the text, some text. And for this file, what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, initiating the git repo. So when you type git init, what it does is create an empty repository. A repository is just a place where your code lives. Um, it is a structured, um, it is just, it's, it's a name for what well, git um, gives just a structured, um, your, your structured code with all its entire history as well of all the changes that have ever been made, all the commits. Um, that's called a repository. And a repository 
has a lot of features and we'll get into exactly what they do. But you want to initialize an empty one and you just type git init for that and then it does that. Right, then um, what it does is it creates this file called, I mean, this folder called dot git. And in there, if you uh, do Alice in dot git, it has all the, the git information about um, about what your project is and and the previous commits and changes and stash and it has all the the repo information in there and then outside of dot git is your project files so there you can see i have file.txt right um before you can get committing you have to uh, configure your email address and your name and that is literally just so that when you uh, do a commit, which is basically just like some code changes, you, your name and email is attached to it so that people can see who you are, you as on the committer. So to configure that, you type in git config dash dash global space user dot name and then your name. Uh, you can put your surname there as well, whatever. This is just so that you are um, added, you, 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 your identity is attached to your commits and your pushes and all your interactions with the repository. Uh, by the way, repo is what people usually refer, use to refer to repositories for short, just because programmers like using short uh, abbreviations and acronyms. All right. Um, so just bisecting this command, git is the name of the program, obviously. Config is the first parameter. That means that you're doing something to config. Dash dash global is a flag to say that this applies to your entire machine, not just this specific repo. And then user dot email or user dot name is the, um, the config key, which is just the, the label of the key, meaning that it is now your email or your name. And then uh, the content is whatever your email address is. Okay, cool. And you'll see these in just a moment when we start doing commits again. All right, so at this point, quick recap, this is the first subsection. Uh, we installed Git, we made a directory, we put some files in there and we initialized an empty repo and we added some, uh, and we added our, our username information as well. So I'm gonna pause here for a quick second and try to open the chat so I can see if they're like, what's going on, if people are following or not. Uh, let's see. All right, can I ask for a, a thumbs down or, a, or something if, if you feel like I'm going too fast or too slow, you're not understanding anything. I see that there are some cool buttons here that you can press uh, that indicate how you're feeling. Yes, no, go slower, go faster. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up here. Okay, that's looking good. All right, I'm gonna continue on with the workshop and since I hope you're all have Git installed, I'm gonna try and pick up the pace now because we have a, a thing or two to get to get through. Okay. So, all right. Um, so you can, to edit a file, like I said, you can just, um, you can either use your favorite command line editor or you can just, use good old notepad or whatever you want to, to create a file uh, or your favorite IDE as well. It's fine, so as long as you have some files. And uh, some content in those files. All right. Uh, now we're gonna run a command called git status. This you can run at any point. Git status is one of the very few git commands that doesn't 
do anything crazy. Um, and with, by that, I mean it doesn't like try, it doesn't alter your repository. It literally just reads. So git status, you can run at any time, and I recommend that you do run it a lot. So in this case, git status says that we don't have any commits yet. Uh, first of all, it says that we're on branch master. So a branch uh, in um, git is basically, a, how should I say this? It is a, a conceptual copy of your entire code base um, with, with, yeah, yes. So what you have is you have branch master, which is basically all your code. Then you can create a new branch and change your code. <clears throat> and that changes will only affect the new branch. It won't affect master. And this is very useful because this allows multiple people to be working on different flavors of the project at the same time. And then those different flavors called branches can then be merged back into master, which is a phrase you'll hear often, merge into master, uh, means uh, adding those flavors, those um, conceptual differences back into the main code base. And then we're gonna show you exactly how this all works. But yeah, branch master is just your default branch with all your normal stuff in it. All right, no commits over here. Uh, then it says that there are some untracked files. And what that means is these are files that get detected uh, you have, but haven't added to your code base yet. So let's do that now. They're called untracked because they exist, but you haven't told Git what to do with them, right? So now you can run a command called git add. And what git add does is it, um, and you can, okay, so you can see there, I said git add another file.txt. What that does is it, um, stages the file, that's the word I was looking for, sorry. It stages the file for commit. And what that means is that it, um, the, it means that the file is ready to be added to your, uh, shall we say, code history, right? It's ready to be committed. Uh, once you commit files, it means that you have made a change and that your project now has those changes added to it. Either the, yeah, the branch has those changes to it like officially. <laughs> um, so if you run git status again, after doing that add, uh, you'll see that it says there is a new file, right? This is the new file that you just staged. And there's an untracked file, which is the other file that I didn't stage. So in fact, let's, let's stage it, why not? You can also unstage files if you want to uh, with git rm dash dash cached, but that's, yeah, we'll get into that later. Okay, so now what we've done is we've staged two files. So now that doesn't mean anything remarkable yet. It just means that these files are ready to be committed. To actually do the commit, what you type is git commit dash m. And so commit is the command, dash m is the, is the parameter, which means message. So every commit has to have a message, or at least it's good programming practice. And in the commit, you describe what happens. So I'm gonna say initial commit, this you'll see often as the first commit, which just means that it's the very first commit, adding in the absolute bare bones of your project. So what typically is a good idea is if you make a new project, um, usually your IDE will generate some files. So in fact, let's just do that now, why not? So I have here idea ultimate, which is a, an IDE that you can use for free if you're a student. Um, I'm not gonna get into that now, that is way off topic. But um, whatever IDE you use, if you use JGrasp or PyCharm, or if you just use a command, okay, not a command line. But um, whatever IDE it is you use, typically when you create a new project, it generates some files. Ooh, it's taken quite a while. Right, and what is really good practice is to, um, to commit those files that it creates as soon as you do. So here I'm just gonna create a new blank Java project, um, call it untitled, whatever. And in here you'll see that there's, for instance, there's a source directory and there's a, a dot idea directory and that kind of stuff. And then you can, yeah. So in fact, before you get started, what could be a good idea is um, 
all oh, right, I'm using different command line now, is to like right here, before you get started, just type git init, right? You'd see it initializes a repository, git add dot idea and source and what untitled IML. Okay. So just immediately straight off the bat, just add those blank files and commit them straight off with the message initial commit. And this is before you've even started. It just, oh, see, okay. <laughs> so now here I'm using a different environment. So it complains that I don't have my global <coughs> email address and, and name set yet, but you know how to do that. Anyway, so just after you create your project, just do an initial commit with nothing in it yet. And then as you create new files, so I'm a class.java, you, um, you can go here and you can say git add source slash some class.java. Oops. Yeah. And then you can, you can commit as you make changes and as you, you know, write new, new content. You get the idea. So that is, that is how you do a commit. Um, you can see now if you're on get status again, that uh, we're on branch master and there's nothing to commit. If you, for instance, make a change to a file, so uh, file.txt and you add some more text, Uh, you'll see that git status reports that this file has been modified, but its modification hasn't been, uh, hasn't been committed yet. So that's why it's in red and it said here, not staged for commit. So you, it's not just new files that you can add for commits, but it's modifications as well. You can add uh, as a, you can stage for commit and you can also stage removals for commit. Um, so these are all operations that happen on files. Uh, that you can commit. So now we're going to do diff. Okay, so let's stage. So let's let's stage file. Okay, and now what we've done is we've staged uh, the modification of that file, and now you can run a thing called git diff dash dash staged, which will show you the differences between these files. Now that doesn't read very easily. I mean, it is correct. Um, you'll see here that it says that, okay, so there's a slash file.txt and b slash file.txt, which is basically just um, a is the one that's in, that's been committed and b is the one that's been staged. So that is before and after your, your, your changes. And then you can see here uh, that Originally, the file just had some text, and now it has some more text. And that's, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a complicated way of displaying the, oops, someone's drawing on my screen here. Um, it's a bit of a complicated way of, of displaying the, um, the, the, the differences between the files. Um, it is the idiomatic way of doing it on a command line though. But if you have an IDE, I know IntelliJ for instance, um, Okay, sorry, let's just, let's just get this configured. Global user.email. Uh, just a reminder to let me know if you guys are falling behind or if I'm going to slowly or anything like that so I can know. Okay. Commit. Uh, right. So if you're using IntelliJ, um, you can line, you can press Control K, and each IDE has its own way of doing this, which will show you the differences in files. So you'll see here that in blue, it says. Uh, so blue files, this is just IntelliJ's way of showing it. Blue files are edited and green files are new files. So you can see here, if I click on some class, it has a little diff, diff utility down here, which shows what the change is that I've made. So before there was nothing and after there's something. 
And if I, you know, make a new uh, method here, method, then um, you'll see here again that it shows the diff like this. Uh, and so usually you'll be working with an IDE and your IDE will automatically, um, so what it does is it queries git diff in the background and then it parses it and then it shows it to you in a nice user friendly readable way. And this is the way that you'll typically be doing it if you're, um, if you're interning or if you're working somewhere, if you're working in a group and using um, git. So this is the way that it'll be showing the diffs and this way you know exactly what changes you're making. Okay. Um, oh, here's the chat. Some people are requesting that I go slower. All right, noted. Um, okay. So let's start. Let's start from the from the beginning of this subsection. So we're currently in a directory. And the directory has some files in it, right? Um, these files have uh, some content, and these files are represent your code base. So they right now they're text files, but they could be source files for a Java program, in which case they're .java, or they could be YAML files or XML files, or whatever, right? It's just your files, and they are the files that make your program work. And later on in this workshop, we'll be showing you exactly how to uh, collaborate and how to work on a real project and add real files, do testing, all that stuff. Um, so, oh, someone's asking how to quit Vim. Okay, uh, once you're in Vim, you press colon and then Q <laughs> and then enter and you quit Vim. That's, um, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a a joke how difficult it is to quit them. There are there are memes about it, but yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, anyway, so I was saying we have a um, project, and uh, you have we initialize the repository because we typed git init, and that's short for initialize. And what it did is it just created an empty repository which has nothing in it. So it just means that now it's ready to start doing stuff. And you just have to run it before you get going. And like I said, if you're using an IDE, I recommend that as soon as you start up, before you even start coding, just type git init and um, to initialize repository and then do an empty commit. Now an empty commit is when you just add the files that are in the, um, the repo. I mean, yeah, just the files that are there. And then by using git add and then you can uh, commit it. And the way that you commit it is you type git commit, and we'll add all the files that you want to commit, dash M, and then a commit message just describing what's going on. So um, you can, in this case, what we did is you can see here, we, um, we added some text. And so this isn't really a good commit message, but you would say something like added some feature, you know, if you're, if you're actually adding some feature, but in this case, I literally just added some text to a file. Okay, that's too big to the second file. Okay, bam. And there you go, that's your commit. And now what you should have, if you're on git status, is nothing to commit, working tree clean. If you see something here, it means that you have files that are altered or deleted or something changed and you haven't committed that change. And I recommend that you do commit that change before we go on to the, to the next phase. All right, let's see, how are we doing? Okay, I'm still, I'm still seeing some thumbs up here. So you can at any point, you can change what your, what your opinion is by clicking on one of the buttons available to you. All right, so 
now we're going to go on to this phase, which is doing and undoing things. So sometimes, you know, you make a commit and then you sort of regret doing that commit. And now we're going to talk about how we can undo that commit. And the reason you might want to undo a commit is if you were too hasty and you didn't, you realized there was a test case, for instance, that you feel like you needed to, to um, that you didn't cover or whatever, whatever the case may be. There are many reasons to, uh, to change a commit. And this is, the, this is the way to do it. So let's say, um, let's say I, okay, let's say I remove the file, uh, file.txt. Wait, did I, is it not here? No, okay, so git rm file.txt uh, removes the file, literally, but also for stages the removal for commit. So if I type git status, you'll see here it says deleted colon in the file name. And now let's say that I'm a little bit cocky and I type commit dash m, don't need that file anymore, exclamation mark, right? Now I committed the removal. So now you can see all I have is just one file. Now to, um, to undo my commit and get that file back, um, what I can do is, okay, there are many ways of doing it. Uh, I see now, I'm going to show you uh, the simplest way, which is just to say, git reset. Uh, okay, you don't, I don't think you have to specify dash dash soft, just git reset and then uh, head. Okay, that didn't work, okay, hold on. It's git reset and then uh, copy, oh no, that also didn't work, hold on. Remember what this command was. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Okay, hold on a second. I scuffed up now. Uh, okay, here we go. So, so, all right, so this command that I just showed you here, this one, git reset head and then uh, carrot, I believe that thing is called a carrot. Let me just make sure about that. Yep, yeah, C-A-R-E-T, that's a, it's called a carrot and uh, you get it by most keyboards has it as shift six. That's a little, um, it's, the, it's the symbol right there. Uh, you sometimes you'll see people use it to, to indicate to the power of. In this case, what it does is if you run this, git reset head and then the carrot at the end, it, um, it undoes your commit, but leaves the files staged. So you'll see here if I say git status, then you still, it, this is now staged, the, the deletion. And the file still isn't there because the deletion is staged. Now, if you wanna unstage a file, what you run is you run git reset head and then the name of the file, in this case, file.txt. So this works, then I should have my file again. Uh, so sometimes Google is your friend and uh, you'll find that, geez, this guy really scuffed up. Like you can just Google, uh, how to undo something. Yeah, see, I thought it would be this, but it's not. Okay, so if you, mm, let me just try this out. So I'm gonna recommit this file. Oh wait, it's not staged. Okay, cool, and now I'm going to say git reset hard head, carrot, and we're in business. Okay, cool, got it. So, all right. So there are two different ways of doing this, okay. Git reset, 
it reset head with a carrot. So it appears that carrot uh, means that it's the it's the the commit before this basically. So git reset head with a carrot. What it does is it undoes your last commit and leaves the files staged that you just uh, that you just committed. So that means that if you have, for instance, uh, a new file, new file.txt, and you add some content. Oops. Um, then you can add it, all right, Get commit. Okay, so now I've added a new file, committed it, right? So if I type git reset head with a carrot, what that does, is uh, it undoes the last, there we go, yeah. It, it undoes the last commit, but leaves your new files, you know. So if you add a new file, it'll still be there, right? So it undoes your commit and just leaves your files as is, right? But sometimes you wanna undo the commit and also um, just remove all your changes completely. So it does undoes the commit and it doesn't leave your files. And if you want to do that, uh, let's say I committed. So you'll see here that I committed this new file now. Now to undo this commit, you just say git reset dash dash hard head with a carrot. And now what it does is it doesn't only undo your commit, it moves your entire history back one commit. So everything that you did in the last commit is gone. And that includes the file, the new file, the txt. Right. That was a lot of content. Um, you, it, it actually isn't all that hard to undo things. It's just, um, it, it is worth knowing. Um, and the most, the most popular method is, is where you made a commit and you wanna like undo that commit um, to, to change some things and then redo it. So for instance, let's say that I wanna print line here some text. Okay, so this is, I'm going to use a, a nice visual example here. So let's say I want to do this. Okay, cool. I press, uh, or actually let's do this in the command line. So I type here, git add source slash some class of Java and git commit dash m uh, new method. Okay. So you'll see that what I did is I committed this file, some class of Java, but there's an error. There's a missing semicolon there. So what I can do now is option one, um, I can either add, I can either add the semicolon and then do a new commit, or I can undo my last commit. And the way we said we do that is with git reset head caret. So what this does, Oh, you know what? I think Windows is misinterpreting this carrot here. Not what? Um, okay, now what's going on here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, here we go. It, uh, this might be a Linux only thing, but it seems like on Windows you use the tilde. Uh, the tilde is this character. It's the one that's um, next to the next to the one uh, on your keyboard, and uh, it looks like Windows uses that character. Perhaps Linux supports it as well. Anyway, so, so git reset head with a tilde. Um, now you'll see that this file is blue, which means that um, 
it is uncommitted. So now I can put the semicolon there and then I can add it again. Some class Java, and I can do my commit. And now you'll see that the git log, which is something we'll get to in a second, which shows all your prop, which shows all your uh, last commits, doesn't have the faulty commit in it. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this anymore because it is something that you can look up and it isn't too important. Just remember git reset head. And also if you have any issues in the future, you wanna check, make sure how GitHub works, you can head over to this website, which I find super awesome, where it's like a little interactive uh, website where you can um, basically just click your way through what happened to fix something. So. For instance, if you want to fix a change, you click there and you say, oh, no, um, commits were made and I want to, let's say, you know, my working directory is clean. And you can just click your way through this and, and say that I want to, let's say, I want to discard all unpushed changes and it says this is how you do it. Bam. So this website is very useful. I'll, I'll send this in a chat just now. But you can also just Google whatever you want and Stack Overflow always has someone that is willing to, uh, to help out or, or someone that has had the same issue. Yeah, git reset dot, yeah, that's also a way to do it. Okay, anyway, um, we'll get to remotes and origins and that kind of stuff in just a second. Um, I wanna see, it looks like everyone is still doing good. I want to move on to Git logs now because this is important if you're in second year. Uh, they always ask for Git logs, even when they don't. I remember in my second year, they said don't submit a Git log and then they subtracted marks for it. So always submit your Git repo and your Git log. Um, by the way, uh, second years, you guys will know, having done the first assignment, that if you want to, second year computer science students, um, if you want to add your repo to your tar file, remember tar. Um, what you do is you just say, create a file and you give it the file name, the tar.gz, and then you specify the files that you want to add. And then also be sure to add in .git. See there at the end, .git. And what that does is it adds in the folder .git and that gives uh, the tutors access to your Git repo. So um, be sure that when you're in second year and you're submitting a project, third year as well, to zip up the Git repo. It's that last, that last folder there. And then uh, you'll see that uh, the file name you can, I think it's TZF. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of content, but anyway, it's in there. So be sure to, uh, to zip up the, the .git directory when you're submitting for second year assignments. Okay, but now if you want to check out your log, you type in git log and that prints out all of your previous, um, all of your previous commits and you'll see that there's only two because I did a lot of resets. <laughs> so even though it may seem like I uh, did a lot, there are only a lot of resets. So um, I only have two like official commits on the books here. And you'll see the first one is, yeah, each commit has this really hectic um, hash code just to make sure that it's unique across all repos. That's just basically the commits ID. And um, yeah, so this, this is your git log basically. So you type in git space log and it shows you all your previous commits. And for the second year CS assignments, they ask that you submit this. And the way that you save this to a file is you just type git log and then uh, greater than sign, which means that you're redirecting the input and then you just give it a file name, whatever you want to call it, git log.txt. And then you can see if you read git log.txt, there it is, the, the content of git log. All right. Um, and then yeah, for second year CS assignments, they'll ask you to submit that. Uh, you'll see here that each of the commits 
does have your author identity attached to it. That is your name and your email address. And that is the importance of, of setting your name and email address when you do a commit. And you'll see that when you go to normal repositories on, on GitHub, that this is true for all, um, for all uh, commits in the world. So, so on GitHub, you can browse other people's repositories and um, you can check here. This guy made a decentralized video chat, um, which maybe we should have been using this. No, um, and you can just click here on commits and you can check here, these are all the commits and you'll see that they're like, this commit's been made by this guy. This commit was made by that guy. And um, yeah, it is what it is. All right, so that is Git logging. And uh, what else do you want to know about Git logging? Yeah, you can basically, okay, so we can, you know, um, you can create a new file and you can say, example, and then you can, uh, Add the new file, and you can commit the new file. By the way, it's important to use quotes if you're typing in the dash in parameter, because, especially if you have a space in the middle of your commit, because if you don't have a space, then it will recognize that as another command or another flag or another parameter. You don't want that. So just use quotes when you're, um, when you're committing. Anyway, so you'll see now if I type git log that there is a third item, it's that one there. Uh, that just this is the this is the message that came with the with the git commit. Now you'll see why messages are important. So you'll see here that this guy, when he made this commit, he wrote a message: add glitter for developer communication. And here you can see the exact changes that he made. So here he added a link to his README file, and um, so that's why it's important to write a good message with your commit so you know what's going on. And okay, now we're gonna do some branching. <clears throat> and then when we're done with branching, we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna get on to actually using GitHub properly. And in the break, you can ask any questions that, uh, that you may have. All right, so branching. Uh, I spoke vaguely about branching in the beginning. I said that uh, you have uh, you have your repo and your repo has all your files in it. And you'll see that these three commits that I made here, they're all on branch master, uh, meaning that they only affect the master branch, which is the, shall I say, the, the flagship, the core or the main, the main flavor of your code base. It's, it's the one that's usually in production. If you're working in a company, it's the one that's, um, that's, uh, that's the one that's used for, yeah, for production, for, for that's, that's the one that's deployed, it's the one the customers see, it's the one, you know, it's the main one, it's the, it's the big boy. And, it's, and, and the master should always be guaranteed to work. So you should never ever commit to master. <laughs> if you're a student, you're working on a project, it's just you, then it's probably fine to commit to master. But if you're working collaboratively, never commit to master, commit to your own branch, which is isolated from master, but it still has your code and your own branch, you can then merge into master. So um, let's, let's, let's look at how we're gonna do that. So I'm going to change uh, file.txt and I'm gonna add even more text to it, right? But now this even more text that I added, I don't want uh, to add to master immediately because for whatever reason, I feel like it shouldn't be there. Uh, if you're working on a project, let's say that you create a new method and you don't want this new method to be part of the main source code because you feel like it might be buggy or whatever, then what you should do is you should make a branch. And the way you do that, if you type git, okay, first of all, you can type git branch and it just shows you all the branches and there's exactly one, it's called master and there's a little star there, which means that it's the current one. That's uninteresting. You can create a new branch by typing git branch and then the name of the branch and we'll call it, typically you'll call it something like the name of your feature. So let's say, 
so I'm just working with text files here, so it's a little bit odd, but you would call it, I'm gonna call it new feature, right? But typically you would call it the, whatever that new feature is. So if you're this guy and you're making a decentralized video chat because you're watched too much of uh, Silicon Valley, then what you can do is, yeah, see, here we go. This guy has two branches, right? This branch is called audio-sucks. And I'm guessing that this is just a branch that he made that has audio that sucks or something. I don't know, maybe it's an old branch, whatever. So this is, this is a branch that the guy has and, you, um, and it has different source code than the, uh, than the master branch so that the master branch is unaffected. So here we created a new branch called new feature and now what we're going to do is we're going to, you'll see that if you run git branch again, that we're still on the master branch, even though the new one exists. So to check out the new branch, meaning to like stop working on master and start working somewhere else, you type git checkout, um, git checkout, and then the name of the new branch that you made, new dash feature. And you'll see there it says switched to branch. And here it says m file.txt. This just means that I made a modification, that's the m, to this file, and I didn't commit that modification. So therefore, it followed, the modification followed me to my new branch. So the modification isn't committed to master, it is on my new branch called new dash feature. Cool. So if I run git status now, what's it gonna tell me? Take a guess. Yep, it's gonna say I'm on branch new dash feature. And um, this has not been staged for commit, of course. And the, yeah, there are shortcuts um, that you can use. So if you wanna create a new branch and check it out at the same time, because you couldn't be bothered to type out two commands, then you can just type git checkout dash b and then new, new branch name, and then that'll do both at the same time. I'm not gonna do that now. Okay, so now let's, uh, Let's, let's, okay, so I modified file.txt. Let's rename a file. To rename a file, you know, you just type move another file to renamed file.txt. Okay, so what I have now is I have a, so, okay, this is interesting. So Git recognizes this as a delete and a creation, which is, you know, it's close enough, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna run status again, and you'll see here that it recognizes this as a new file instead of a rename file, but you know, whatever, you know, to each its own. And um, so let's stage everything. Uh, git add another file.txt and file.txt. Cool. And you'll see now that we, ah, it recognized it as renamed. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so Git sees that we modified a file and then we renamed the file and these are now staged for commit. So we're gonna commit them, but where are we gonna commit them to? We're gonna commit them to my current branch, which is new feature, ciao. So let's just write a commit message and let's say rename the file, cool. So now you'll see that we committed a file. Okay, so git log should now show that this is what happened on master. Now we're on new feature and we made a commit to new feature called rename a file and head is on new feature, which just means that we're currently on new feature. This is where, this is what we're editing right now, right there. Um, cool, so now we have made a commit onto our new branch. And what we're gonna do next is, is we're gonna merge it into master. Okay, all right. Okay, so first before we do, yeah, okay. So in order to do a merge, what you have to do is you have to climb onto the branch that uh, you want to merge onto. So in this case, that's master. So now I'm on branch master. And you'll see now that I'm on master, the file hasn't been renamed, right? Because the rename happened on a different branch. It happened here. So I'm in a completely different world now. And I can check out back into my new feature branch and then 
look at that the file's been renamed it's so it's like two different universes almost but they're branching from the same one isn't that crazy okay so now i'm in master now i'm going to merge in my changes that i made in uh in master so if you're a student and you're working alone in your one project and this is how you'll do it if you're in a company then you're going to be doing something called a pull request which is a really formal procedure and we're going to cover that in the second part of the workshop but um just for now i'm just going to show you how to do uh how to do a pull request i mean how to do a merge normally in the command line when it's just you working on a project and the way you do it is with, well, actually, before we do the merge, let's just check for sake of interest what the, what the difference is between my current branch and the new branch that I made. And the way you do that is you type git diff master, which is your current branch, and then the branch that you just made with two dots in between. And you'll see that the difference is as follows. It is um, the fact that I added even more text to this file here. And also, this file has been renamed. And it says that it recognizes that it's been renamed because it's 100% similar. Yeah, so Git does a lot of interesting, cool algorithms and stuff in the background so that, um, so that you uh, can, uh, so to help you out, to recognize, for instance, when the files were renamed and not just deleted and added and, and that kind of stuff. So that's the difference between the two. And once again, if you're using an IDE, it'll have some way of showing you um, more clearly uh, the, the differences in a more human readable way. And also there are some really cool clients out there, uh, like for instance, Git Tower is a desktop client for, uh, for this kind of stuff and Git Tower will also, if you have it installed, it'll also show it to you more uh, visually and also show you the branching like this, how each of, the, each of the branches branches out of them and how they merge back in and that kind of stuff. So for a more visual experience, don't use the command line, but we'll, we'll get onto all these kind of things in a, in a moment. Right, um, so let's do this merge now. Git merge new feature, enter. There you go, as simple as that. So what I just did is I merged in this branch, new feature into my current branch, which is master. And um, it tells me what happened here. It says that this file, uh, I think uh, has, has some more uh, content, that's plus plus. And then this file has been renamed. That's what the, the, the equals uh, greater than sign means. And yeah, so it just says here, yeah, so the two files have been changed, two insertions, yada, yada. So this is, this is basically how master has changed into new feature. And that, that is, the, that, is the, that, is, that is branching and merging for you. And you'll see here, if you run git status, there should be nothing. If you run git branch, it shows that you're on master. So yeah, that, that is that. And if you want to, you can delete your old branch. I don't recommend doing this because it's always good to have, uh, to have your history there. But if you want to delete your old branch, it's just git branch dash capital D and then the name of your old branch. But now you can't, yeah, obviously you can't check now that branch out because it's been deleted and no longer exists. Path spec did not match any files known to git. Yeah, because the branch doesn't exist. Okay, so let's do a quick recap before we take a break and then we'll take a break okay so what we did is we installed git and we made a repo then we uh, committed some files to that repo i went briefly over how you can reset your um your your, your repo to to undo a commit and i gave you a link although i think that link didn't quite come through hold on this link here copy I copy the link, yeah. Um, everyone in the meeting, there's that link that it can help you to do git fixing, but you can also just Google how to undo commit and you'll see that there's like a million and one articles that show you how to undo a commit. Okay, and then I showed you logging, how to log and how to write a log to a file. And then I showed you 
how to do branch and how to create a branch and uh, move between branches and merge branches together. Now, I just want to say that we're going to be doing this uh, a bit more in detail uh, in the next part of this workshop. And it'll also be a bit more visual and it will involve GitHub. So if you don't understand branching, don't worry about it now. But yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we're going to take a break now. And I want you guys to uh, ask me any questions that you may have in this break. We'll say uh, how long are we breaking for? Let's say 20 minutes or so, Let's say 15 minutes. So 20 past four, it's currently four or five. 20 past four at good old 420. We're gonna um, continue on with the workshop. And in this 15 minutes, you can ask me any questions that you have. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll go over the content and I'll get set up for the next part of this workshop. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, this video will be uploaded. Yeah the video of this of this recording. Um, oh, um, in the meantime, while we're taking a break, uh, can I ask that you guys make yourself selves GitHub profiles? So just go to github.com right there. And um, and create yourself a, a profile. And when you create a profile, pick a, pick a username, uh, whatever it is, and send that username to us, either on the group chat, yeah, well, on, the, yeah on, the, on the group chat, on the Zoom group chat, create a, create a GitHub account and send it there. So that we can, uh, it's gonna be necessary for the next part of the workshop. Do we have a GitHub channel? So, if you mean GitHub organization, we do have that, but that's only for the, the members. Wait, what? Oh, a YouTube channel. Oh, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have a YouTube channel, not yet, but our social media organizer will get on that as soon as possible, I'm sure. Um, because that's where we're going to be releasing the, the video. Are there any other questions about content covered? Uh, at this point, you should, you should understand how to commit a file at the very least. Yeah, uh, guys, keep on, keep on getting, your, uh, getting your GitHub profile names. Uh, create your GitHub account and, and send them over your, your, your names. Things are, gonna, things are really going to ramp up in the second part of this workshop, let me tell you.
All right, so um, we have uh, five minutes left before we continue with, uh, <clears throat> with the second part of this workshop. Is there anything that I can go over before we, uh, before we get going with, with part two? Because um, anything, anything at all? Any, any questions that anyone may have about anything uh, get related? I guess I might just staging. Let me tell you about staging. So um, let, me, let me start my screen up. So I uh, increase the, the text size here. I hope that helps a little bit. So when you're uh, when you're in a in a directory, so just uh, let me just initialize an empty repository. Okay. So this is an uh, empty directory with no files in it. And now I'm gonna make a file. I'm gonna put some text in there and save it. Okay, so now I have a file there. Now, um, what I'm gonna do, so in order to commit this file or a change to a file or the removal of a file, what you do is you um, have to stage it first, okay? And what staging means is you're just telling, you're telling Git that this file, I want this file to be added to the commit. Now, this, now the reason that they didn't have commit as one function is beyond me, but <laughs> the, the cool thing about it is now you can manage, uh, you can manage, you can set up your commits easier. It's, it's, it's just a logical separation if you think about it. Like it could have been one function like, git commit, commit and then the file names and then the, the message, but it wasn't. They split it up into two functions. You have to add it first, okay, cool. And then you can commit it after it's been added. And I think that's just for like convenience sake so that you can, so that you can have, you know, so that you can manage your files that you will commit separately from the commit itself, I guess. So that's what, yeah, so that's just, so files that are staged are files that are going to be committed. And um, that's that's staging in a nutshell, yeah. Um, so commit, let's commit. And um, there's also something interesting about staging. If I alter this file now, and Wait, hold on. Yeah, okay. If I add the file, okay, oops. If I git add it and then, so now it's staged, right? And now I add another line. Now you'll see git status says that the file has been modified, right? These, this is staged, but that very same file has been modified even more after, uh, after the commit. I mean, oh, sorry, sorry after the stage. So it, it, it shows the same file as modified twice. And what that means is it's one modification has been staged and the other hasn't. So this just, so now if you do the commit, it won't commit these new modifications. It's just like, I don't know, I guess staging is taking a, a snapshot of a file at a certain point in time and, and making sure that, that that snapshot is gonna be the one that you commit. Stage files can't, staged files can't be changed uh, unless you do it explicitly by saying git add. All right. Um, what else is new? Uh, stashing, yes. Okay, stashing. Um, I wonder if I should do it now. Okay, okay. I'm going to do stashing, and we'll start the workshop a few minutes late. So, um, just for sake of interest, uh, stashing is when you, yeah, for for the normal developer, there aren't a lot of use cases for this, but I'll, I'll go over it quickly. Um, so you might be here and you might I'm just sorry, let me just do this commit quickly. All right. Um, now let's say that I uh, 
I add a new file, All right, with some content. And now what I want to do is, I don't know, whatever you, there might be many use cases for this. I want to, I want to save my changes that I made locally. So that, that is uh, this new file. I want to save this locally, but I don't want to like go out and copy it now to some other directory. I just want to save it locally. And so that I could continue with my, with my work. And let's say I want to like, I want to merge in some stuff or whatever, whatever, but I don't want to make this commit now. I just want to save this work locally. Um, what I can do to get a clean, you want to, I want a clean working directory. That's what I want, but I don't want to lose this work. What you can do is you can say git stash save. And what that does is should save my local changes. Maybe I have to add this first, hold on. Okay, cool. So now git stash save. All right, so now you can see that the new file that I made is not here it's been stashed and that just means that it is, it exists somewhere else. Uh, not for us to worry about and we can retrieve it whenever we need to, but only locally on my machine. So now I can make my changes, whatever I can, I can, uh, I can change this file, add some more text onto this line and I can get add that file and get commit. And um, all this happens without changing this, this file that I stashed, right? And now let's say that I wanna get back this file that I stashed and I can just say git stash pop. And what it does is it just, it brings this file that I stashed back into existence and any changes that I made actually for that matter. And there it is. So yeah, like I said, the use cases for this are quite limited. And as a normal person, I mean, as, as a second year comp sci student or even third year comp sci student working on one branch for most of the time, working on one repo, one person, not, don't think you'll be using this too much, but I mean, there are always some reasons that you might want to use this. Like for instance, if you, uh, if you haven't, I don't know, like if you, if you made a change, um, so let's say you make a commit and then you make a change and then you realize that you want that change to be part of the commit, then you get stash save and then reset and then pop to, to introduce that change as well and then commit. And that'll, uh, that'll add your change onto the, onto the commit. So there are a lot of things that you don't need to, um, there are a lot of things that you can't do with Git if you have uh, staged files. So for instance, a merge, you can't do a merge if you have staged files, you can't do a pull. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of reasons that you might wanna have a, a working directory that's clean. Let me just, sorry, let me just uh, commit this. By the way, I never use commit messages like that. Ah, there we go, working directory. Working clean, clean, yeah, that's what you want. All right, um, yeah. So there are reasons to use it, but uh, that's that's the nutshell. Okay, now we're gonna now we're gonna start with the second section. Uh, welcome to everyone that's just tuned in. We're gonna start with uh, part two of the workshop, which is um, which is part of the which uh, in in which we will be uh, working with GitHub and. Uh, if you're gonna be interning, which I hope you have all, if you're in second year, you should have applications out right now for interning. If you're in first year, you should be scoping out where you wanna be interning next year because um, it's great working experience. And it, if you've been on the fence about what you feel about the tech industry, or even if you haven't been on the fence, it's really good to go, to go intern. Anyway, so if you're gonna go intern, chances are nine out of 10, you're gonna be using GitHub Okay, maybe not nine out of 10, but the chances are gonna be 10 out of 10, you're gonna be using some sort of version control. And of all the version controls softwares out there, GitHub is the most popular in the world. And I mean, I mean, sorry, yeah, Git is the most popular and GitHub is the most popular uh, for hosting Git repositories. So chances are you'll be working with GitHub. If you're not gonna be working with GitHub, whatever else you're gonna be working with will be very similar. If it's Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever. Um, so I'm going to be going through uh, how this how this works, 
in just a second. And then you'll, um, you should, uh, yeah, learn something new about how, how, um, how repository management works and how, um, how collaboration works. So uh, this, I want everyone to, first of all, make a GitHub account. If you haven't yet, please do make a GitHub account. Um, and send your uh, send your GitHub username to the to the chat, and then you'll be added as a collaborator to this repo here. I just sent a link in the chat. Uh, it is a link to a repository. Uh, it is a repository made by the UCT Developer Student Club, and uh, the repository's name is GitHub Workshop. And that is uh, this repository contains. Um, some code, right? And what we're gonna do, broadly speaking, is everyone is gonna check out this repo right here. And then you're going to add a change. You're gonna, you're gonna add your own file. And then you're going to commit it, push it, and then make a pull request. And the pull request will be, um, will then be uh, accepted by me. And then your code will be part of the main repository where we'll then run it. And then you'll see how everyone's code is, is there. So um, quickly, okay, so right, everyone, yeah. So if you haven't made a GitHub account yet, please do that, please send your username, that's important. Then second of all, I want you to go to this repo, the link that I sent you, okay. Now in this repo, there's a file called readme.md, which is displayed automatically. And it contains everything that we're gonna be doing in this part of the workshop. And it is just what I broadly said to you about. You're gonna clone it, change it, push it, pull request it, and then run it. Okay, so um, let's get going. Um, I'll describe what a pull request is when we, when we get there. All right, so let's start. Uh, first things first, give your username to it here. Right, then, okay. Somewhere in your, uh, in your computer, I want you to make a directory. Uh, okay, it's called TMP, whatever. Make a directory just somewhere for you to work, right? So then what are you gonna do is you're gonna clone this repository. So this repository is, um, is public, which means that you can type git clone and then this link here. And what it will do is it'll copy that entire public repository onto your computer. And this is the normal way to do it in industry. So when you go to your internship, they're gonna give you a computer or you're gonna use your own, whatever. They're gonna give you a link. And then what's gonna happen is you're going to type in git clone and then the, the link. And then it'll, what it will do is it'll put that entire um, repo on your computer. So you can see here, here it is, github-workshop. And then I can go in there and here is the content of the repo. And it also gets some Git details, Git details. So if you type in Git log, you'll see that it, it just shows all the previous commits that have been made. So I, I made, as you can see, quite a few commits to, uh, to this file, um, I mean, to the, to the repo. And you can, you can, if you want to, you can read through all my past commits, but whatever. So yeah, at this point, you should have the repo on your computer. Uh, locally so that you can make changes to it. Okay. Um, just broadly speaking, um, sorry, this, what this repo contains is a, a script called main.sh, which is a shell script. And all it does is it executes all the Python files in the directory. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna add your own Python file to that directory. And then you're gonna pull, uh, pull with a pull request, add it into the master branch where everyone's code will then be, and then we'll be able to run it and see the changes. So right now, if I run the script, it says one Python file, and that is, that is what my Python file executes. George is here. Okay, so um, how we're gonna do this, and this is how you're gonna do it at your internship as well. So you're gonna say git branch, and then give it a name. Now. If you're in an internship, you're gonna name it what you're doing, which is the new feature. But in this case, I want you to make the name your student number. Or if you don't have a student number, your, um, I don't know, 
your your first and last name or or something something that's unique because everyone is going to be pushing their own branches and i don't want any branch conflicts so use your own student number as a as a branch um i'm going to use mine over here okay cool uh, now that branch has been created and now i want you to check out that branch So now, now, okay, now in this new branch, I want you to create a Python file and call the Python file your student number because like I said, don't want any conflicts. Um, I already have one here, so I'll just call it my student number dash two or whatever. Just call it your, your student number um, dot pi. And then in this Python file, I want you to just very simply put one print message. And I want you to just, you can say anything you want in this print message. Um, use your name or whatever example print message. Let's say, let's say, uh, let's say webinar host program. Or, or say something like um, hello from your suburb or whatever. Uh, just put anything you want in this print statement. Just put just one print statement. Uh, that's all I want. Um, if you want, you can put some weird logic in here. Like, please don't please don't put a for loop with print statements. Like, I don't know. If you wanna if you wanna write and if you wanna quickly get like a, the weather or something to you know, add that to your print statement, you can do that too. But um, just for now, just a print statement and something. Just print something, anything. Make sure it's unique. Uh, preferably have your name in it or some joke that's unique to you. But yeah, print statement that's unique. And then also um, the Python file must have a unique name. So that'll be, that'll be your name, your, your student number or, or something unique to you. Okay, uh, in industry, obviously this will be, if you're making a new feature, there'll be a new Python file or you'll be editing other Python files, whatever. Okay, cool. So now you're going to add this new file that you created. All right, and say it with me now, you're gonna commit that file, that's right. And put the commit name, just say, added my own file. Cool, cool. Uh, I should mention before you did the commit, um, just, just if you're on Linux, just run uh, the main script and the way that you do that is in the directory dot slash main dot sh I'll run that script and it should have it should print two lines which and the one is mine George is here and the next one is yours which is um, which is whatever text that you chose to put there uh, if it doesn't you did something wrong if it gives you some sort of error it'll crash whatever right so you want to be in a scenario where, oh, by the way, main.sh that only runs on Linux. Uh, if, you, if you're using Windows, you won't be able to test this. Sorry. Um, just make sure that you have a Python file. Um, you can still do the rest of the stuff. You just won't be able to test it. But yeah, okay. Make sure that you put a Python file there and make sure it has your student number as the name and it does a print. Okay, cool. And it's committed. If you want to change your commit, remember what you do is you say git reset head and then tilde, I think, hold up, yes, yeah, git reset head and then tilde and then it'll, it'll undo the commit and leave your changes as is and then you can go and, and oops, crazy, and change your file. To, to say whatever you wanted to say. So for instance, I'm gonna say here that, and now you can get add that boy and commit. Okay, All right, so now what you should have is a clean working tree and you should have committed this file onto your branch, your own branch, not master, please. If you commit it to master, it's fine. Just get out of there. Just type, you know, get branch and the new branch and then get checkout to get to the new branch. Okay, cool. Um, someone's still struggling to exit Vim. Um, 
to exit Vim, if you're in Vim and you made your own file, what you do is you type, okay, so you see at the bottom left, it says dash dash insert dash dash. That means that you're in insert mode. So you can like type content, right? Um, to save it, what you do is you press escape. Okay, and you see there the insert goes away. You see that, cool. Press escape and then colon. And then if you wanna save the file, X, right there. And then you press enter and it saves the file. If you don't wanna save the file, um, you can type colon Q and then exclamation mark and it won't save the file. So uh, yeah, just once again, if you're in Vim, VI, and you have some file that you're editing, you can do the stuff. So, uh, so yeah, normally you're not in insert mode. Press I to go to insert mode and you can type stuff and then press escape to get out and then colon X, enter. That'll write the file. Uh, or colon Q, exclamation mark, that'll not write the file. And uh, by the way, you don't have to be using Vim. You can use like Notepad if you're on Windows or you can use Notepad++ if you're cool and you're on Windows or you can use, um, if you're on Linux, you can use gedit, which I don't obviously don't have here. Um, or you can use whatever you want, or if you really want to use the command line, you can use Vim. I like Vim. Uh, you can also use, what's the simple alternative to Vim again? It's not Emacs, it's, uh, come on, what's the, Nano, there we go, Nano, yes. Oh, I don't have Nano installed. Um, yeah, to, uh, usually most, I mean, most computers have, most Linux machines do have Nano installed. If you don't, I'm pretty sure you can just use your, your package manager if it's zipper or APT or whatever and just install Nano. Uh, yes, wow, a whole one megabyte. Okay, uh, so you can use Nano uh, whatever. And Nano is a bit easier to use because you can just type, you don't have to go to insert mode. And then to save the file, you just press Control X and then Y. And then enter. Yeah. Okay. So has everyone created a Python file and then committed it to their own um, branch? That's what I want. I want everyone to have made a Python file and committed it to their own branch. Okay, cool. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna push it to, okay, so at this point, you won't be able to do this unless you're added to the, to the repo. So make sure that you have created a GitHub account, number one, and number two, that you have sent that username to the, to the tutors to, on the group so that we can add you as a collaborator. In order to push your own branch, to the origin, uh, which is origin is just, the, it's the name, it's the default name for your remote, which is um, basically your repo online. Um, in order to push your branch there, you will, uh, you will need to be a collaborator. So the way that you do this, after you've made a commit, you can type in git push origin. Uh, so this is origin is just where it's going and that's to the, it automatically, I think, sets your origin to the to the place that you clone from. So that is here. This. So remember, we typed git clone and then the URL. Right. That's the URL. That's your origin. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to push to origin. What are we pushing? We're pushing our own branch. Uh, so my branch's name. I forgot to get your branch's name. Just type git branch. And it's says there, there is the name, git push origin, and then the name of your branch, which should be a student number or whatever. And it's gonna ask you for a username and a password. So for username, you just use your username. For password, if you're like me, then you have uh, two-factor authentication enabled. 
in which case you won't be able to just use your password. Okay, if you don't have 2FA enabled, that's fine. Just type in your password, press enter, it should work. But I promise you, if I type in my password, press enter, it's not gonna work. That's because I have two-factor authentication enabled. And if you have two-factor authentication enabled, you need to get something called a personal access token. Um, hopefully none of you have two-factor authentication enabled because that is a pain. Okay, it's not a big pain. It's like a small pain, but it, it takes time. Anyway, so that should, so now you should have pushed your branch to origin. Ooh, permission denied. Okay, so if you're getting permission denied, that's a good thing, because that means that you, you're correctly doing the push command. Um, but it also means that we haven't added you as a contributor. Oh, we haven't added anyone as a contributor. It says one, okay. Um, let's just see, let's see what's going on here. Um, okay, so we do have some contributors here. Let's see, this guy doesn't have one. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add you as a contributor. Oh, oh uh, dude, you have a pending invitation. Uh, yeah, just just check. Go to go to like go to the repo, which is that link I sent you, and then it should have a little uh, thing at the top that says you have been invited. And you just have to accept that, and then you can you can uh, you can edit the the repo. Um, yeah. Okay. So. While you guys are pushing your repositories, um, I want to uh, just make a mention of SSH. So SSH is uh, it's a way, okay, so it's short for secure shell and it's a way for you to access remote, um, let's say machines, access remote machines through the shell, which is this thing, the shell of the terminal. And it, it's, a, it's a whole thing and a half. I'm not gonna go into exactly how it works, but um, you can use SSH with Git uh, to do commits and to, to do pushes like this. So, but normally it just uses HTTPS. This is the, this is the protocol it uses. And in HTTPS, it asks you for username and password. If you use uh, SSH, which uh, you can do here, and it just, the, the URL looks a little bit different, but you can use SSH to, um, to do it as well. And SSH, it won't ask you for a password, but to do SSH, you need to set it up with your account and it uses a whole private public key um, encryption configuration. It's a little bit much to go over now in this workshop. If you guys want me to, I'll go over it at the end, but um, there are ways of doing this that don't require username and password. And that are still secure and it's called SSH, but we'll get onto that uh, at some other point in the future if you want to. Okay, um, so you'll see here that I pushed my branch and um, so that should be there. If I click on branches, you'll see that, okay, I've gotten a few branches that have been pushed, all right. See here, there's this one. Yeah, so there's some, some branches here, uh, people that have pushed. All right, fantastic. So when you, when, you do a, when you do a branch push, you'll see here that uh, it's the remote gives back a response. And it says here, create a pull request for your branch on GitHub by visiting this link. So I want you all to create a pull request. And a pull request is exactly what it sounds like. It is just a request to have your uh, branch pulled into master. So to make it, um, so we say reality to make it part of the main the main code. So the way you do that is either you can follow this link here and just follow the prompts, um, or if you didn't get this link or you lost it somehow, you can go to the repo, and then you it should say here your recently pushed branches. But if it doesn't, click on branches, and then click on your own one. 
and then it will show your code here. And then over here, over here, there's a button that says pull request. And I want you to click it and this will create a pull request. Okay, so here this, it automatically generates a little description for you, but you can, you can type whatever you want. You could say, um, pull request example, and you can even add in images and files and whatever. So this is just, this is a description of your branch. And you know, it, it might, it's good to have a motivation in there as well for why you want your branch to be, um, why you want your branch to be part of master. And you can describe exactly what changes you did, what the commits are. You can put all the kind of info here. And once you're ready, you can just click on create pull request. And if everything's okay, it should have created a pull request. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You go to pull requests and you'll see here's a bunch. And um, so this is mine, for instance. This is what a pull request look like. Uh, so normally when you're interning and you're at a company, you'll make a pull request. You won't just merge in all willy nilly. The, the value of a pull request is it allows, um, it allows uh, administrators, people that own the branch, I mean, own the, the repo to check your, your request and um, basically comment on it, review it, make sure that it, it, is, it is a good idea for this branch to be merged in. Um, so in my case, I'm going to check. So this is the, this is the example pull request, right? Then I'm going to click on uh, commits. I can check the commits that are part of this branch. And I can check the diff. I can see here's a new file. That's what it looks like. Okay, cool. I can even, I can review the change and I can say it looks good. You know, looks good. And I can like approve it. I can't approve my own request, obviously. Um, so, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to use someone's, someone else's pull request as an example. Uh, Jonathan, I hope it's okay with you. So I'm gonna just gonna check uh, Jonathan's pull request here, and I see here that he added a file and it has its own little piece of information here. So now I'm gonna review this, and this won't be done by you. Um, I'm gonna say that it's too many lines or whatever, and then I can review it. And now it says here that okay, cool the the pull request has been reviewed and you'll see here that there's a comment with a reason and all that kind of stuff. Um, continuous integration is a very interesting thing and it is something that we should talk about, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Um, but continuous integration is something that you can well, integrate with your, um, with your pull requests to have automatic like builds and checks and things like that happen when, um, when you uh, when you make a pull request, but all right, don't worry about that now. For now, just worry about making your pull request, and um, then me as the admin, I will be uh, I will be confirming these pull requests. So, for instance, okay, this looks good. Then I can click merge pull requests with whatever, and then it says merged, and now you'll see that if you go to the main code on master, my new file is there. And that is my new file that I just merged in from my previous branch. So now I'm going to basically just add in all your, all your branches, all your open, open commits. So I can check here. Uh, here's a pull request. And yep, that looks good. I'm going to merge you into master. All right, so now anyone that hasn't yet, just like do your, uh, do your commits, do your pushes. Okay, and uh, do your pull requests, please. If you haven't yet, do your pull request. You'll see that as your as it gets pulled, I think you'll get a notification by email if your request gets pulled in. Um, 
it's uh, yeah, it's a whole it's a whole system. So in reality, this is what will happen. Some admin will review your code, and they'll either pull it in or they'll reject it. In which case, uh, in which case, you'll if it's rejected, then ooh, you're missing a new line at the end of your file. I'm gonna let it go this once. Just remember, it's it's good it's good programming practice to put a to put a new line at the end of your file, and that is well. There are many different theories for why that's a good practice, but um, I think I think the the most prominent uh, reason for me, at least, is um, so that when you when you view the file, it uh, it reads properly. Uh, so some so for instance, Bash doesn't read files properly if you don't have a new line at the end of the file. So if I say cat file, oh, it does. Okay, well, there, I know there's some, there some programs that don't read properly. It, it expects a blank line at the end of your file to know that the file has ended. Anyway, um, one more pull request is open. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, cool. All right, so if there's anyone else that still needs to make a pull request, please let me know on, uh, on the chat before we move on. Okay, it looks like there aren't any open pull requests. Fantastic. All right, so now this is what master looks like. It has all of your files in it. So now you, and on your machine, you probably want to check out what master looks like. And the way you do that, is so right now you should be on your 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 little branch right um sorry about that yeah should be on your branch now check out master right and you'll see that master now it, it just it has so it says here your branch is up to date but that's fake news it just means that your branch is up to date with the master the way it was last time you you uh you fetched from from master so basically it's up to date with how the branch was when you cloned it. So now what you're going to do is you're going to Now what you're going to do is you're going to update your master branch on your local machine. And the way you do that is with git pull origin master. You can also use git fetch. I think let's in fact, let's do that git fetch uh, and this just gets the it, it just updates your master to the latest uh, to the latest commit and you'll see now that oh, that didn't work sorry I think it is git pull so git pull origin master and that gets all the uh, that updates your branch basically it up, sorry it updates your local repo to to have the the master content. Uh, so now you can see here that I've got all your files because it's been pulled in. If, if I do git log, then you can see that um, all the pull requests are here and all the, all, the, I mean, so all the merges are here from all the pull requests. Oops. And um, yeah, and so that's all the content is here. And now if I run main.sh, lo and behold, there it is, all of your content. So Jonathan de Kock is here, Bats, Dan, this guy will comment about JS here, me and host. Okay, and you have it. Save in Python files. So that is, uh, so that is, um, so that is the crux of it. That is how you edit code, uh, push, create a new branch, create a pull request, and then have, have the pull request reviewed. And then if it's successful, you merge it in. All right, so that concludes the second part of our GitHub workshop. I hope you guys learned quite a bit from it. Uh, I know it has been a chore teaching this. And I also know that this is pretty valuable information because uh, I remember when I was in second year, they covered Git three, three lectures, three lectures max, I think they used on it and it was 
really half-assed. Like they didn't go into nearly as much depth as I did here. And I really, I know a lot of people that struggled in second year to, to use Git. And that wasn't even proper Git usage. That was just like, um, I was literally just like getting the, the Git file and uh, I mean the, the Git directory. So um, yeah, uh, anyway, I, I hope this helped. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for a few more seconds if you have any questions you wanna ask me. But this is this, I'm done with my main content. For now. How am I running Linux stuff on Windows? That's a great question. So there's this, there's this thing called uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. And what it basically is, WSL for short, is it allows, it just, it, it puts a really small Linux uh, thing, Linux environment on Windows. It's, it's basically like a whole distro, but it's like stripped down a little bit. So they like, they make their own versions of certain Linux distributions, and then they make it run on Windows in its own little console. Uh, and it's just, it's headless, it's just this. Um, so I have, OpenSUSE's one installed. I'm sure it works for other versions of Windows, but I mainly just use it on Windows 10. If you go to the Microsoft Store, it's, it's this easy, I kid you not. Just type in uh, Windows Subsystem or WSL, and then you can just pick your flavor, anything you want. Debian, Ubuntu, you know, OpenSUSE, CentOS, whatever you want. You just click it. And most of them are free. I think all of them are free. Oh, this one's paid, okay. Debian is free. Uh, and then what it does is it just, it installs, uh, you just click get, and it installs it in WSL. And then you can just click it, and this is, this is what it looks like. It's just, it's just a terminal, and it runs, uh, it runs OpenSUSE in this case, or you can make it run whenever you want. Um, so that's nice for cases like this where you want, for instance, Zoom. The Zoom client on Linux is horrible, so I had to install it on Windows, but I still need to use like Linux stuff. And so that's, this is really nice. Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay. Thank you very much for the compliments. Okay, so there was a quick uh, clarification about git fetch versus git Cool. Git fetch downloads the remote content onto your local machine, but it doesn't do a merge. If you want your working copy to be merged, you do git pull. So that's the difference between git fetch and git pull. Okay. It, uh, is there any other questions, any other content, git or, or git related that you want me to go over? Uh, now's the time, ask a question. What's forking? Okay, yes, that's an excellent question. Okay, so um, on, on GitHub, so this is so the methodology that I showed you, the whole making your own branch and then making a pull request. That is what you use if you're in a company and you are, um, and you are uh, you're adding to a repo that you're already, you're already part of the company, you're adding to the, to the repository. And yeah, so that's, that's the way you normally do it. But if you're contributing to open source, so um, if you wanna, if you're just browsing some guy, you're like, okay, this guy, let's see. Uh, okay, this guy that made a decentralized video chat, right? Let's say I wanna add to his stuff, I wanna contribute. I can't just ask him to add me as a contributor because that is a very special status and it allows you to do all kinds of hacking things. I mean, not hacking, but it allows you to do a lot of edits that you probably don't want the, everyone in the world to do. So what you do is you fork. And the way you do that is you just click the fork button. And then what it does is it makes a copy of the entire thing to your personal Git, uh, GitHub account. And then you can use this version that you have. So you see here, it has my username in front of it now. And I can clone this. Uh, in fact, let's do this now. So that, um, uh, well, okay. So uh, what, what I can do is I can clone this to my computer. I can make my changes. I can push it to my own master. And then I can make a pull request into that guy's master. So that is how 
I will then be making my pull request, not, not from his organization, but from my own. I made it looks like a cross repo um, pull request. And that way he can still see my pull request and pull it in if he wants to. Um, I'll, I'll show you, until there's another question, I'll show you how that works. Um, so basically your arch here, oops, where is he? So I'm just gonna clone I'm going to clone my own version of this guy's repo. And it takes quite a while because this guy's decentralized video chat system is pretty big. Um, zip call IO. I wonder if there's like a typo or something I can correct. Okay, this is gonna, oof, this is gonna take quite a while, hold on. I know that there's a way to limit the depth uh, of when you, do a, when you do a git clone, so that it doesn't take forever. Ah, there you go. So if you use git clone dash dash depth one, then it won't get all the history. It'll just get the most current version. But anyway, so this is the so this is the normal way of contributing to um, to open source projects. Uh, as you do a fork, just click there on fork, and it just copies it to your own account. You clone it, and then you make some change and you push it. You can push it to your own branch or to master or whatever, and then you press this button here to make a pull request to the original branch. And then this guy, I am Ramsey, can uh, can review it and everything. Yeah, so that's what forking is. But like I said, when you're when you're going to be interning and working in industry, 99% of the time you're not going to be using forking. You're going to be using the pull request method that I showed you, which is just um, yeah, you're already part of the organization. You just make a new branch, request it. So. Um, I'm gonna, so this is gonna take too long. Okay, so I'm gonna kill this. Um, I'm gonna stop the event now. If you guys have any uh, questions or, um, or you wanna do any follow-ups or you wanna view this video online or whatever, uh, you can uh, just follow the link that uh, Jono just sent in the chat. It is, uh, it is a feedback form and we'd love you to, to fill in that feedback form to tell us how you think the, the event went. And then you can watch this video online at any point in the future. It'll be posted. You'll be notified in all channels about how the event went. And um, yeah, that is it from the whole DSC th team. I would like to thank everyone that, uh, that dropped by and, and checked out uh, our GitHub tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned. If there's something that you want covered uh, that you feel wasn't covered here, do let us know in the feedback form or however you want. And we'll uh, we'll make organize a, a future workshop and um, and and yeah that uh, that about sums it up. There will be more future workshops, and we'll be doing a lot more content. Um, I hope you guys are excited for uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, I know we've been having a bit of a setback with uh, the whole pandemic and whatnot, but. You know, everyone should just stay optimistic because uh, life is short, but it's not, not worth living. All right. Good night and goodbye.